Is there finally a team challenging Red Bull? In a Formula 1 season marked by Max Verstappen's historic domination, it's been unusual to see him really have to defend the lead from a different car or discuss with his engineer if he has to speed up to get the job done. But it's happening right now because of McLaren, which leaves us with some questions. What more can we expect from McLaren? And what's going to be their development master plan? McLaren and Lando Norris's efforts at the 2023 Brazilian Grand Prix and its sprint race gave us a situation that F1's triple world champion hasn't found himself in often this season. A situation where he had to care about another rival rather than just fading into the distance. The Briton got a world-class start in his McLaren, rocketing from 8th on the grid to 2nd position behind Max Verstappen. Looking back, it was perhaps Norris's best start in Formula 1. In terms of position change, yeah. I don't think it's the quickest one, but it's all relative at the end of the day. It was a pleasant surprise to come out in P2 already after Turn 1. I was expecting, and we planned a lot for 20 laps in traffic, some overtakes and a bit of fun. I still had fun, but from P2 already. Norris had taken the sprint race pole position the day before. Verstappen blasted out like a rocket on Saturday, overtaking Norris before the first corner. Obviously, that's where I lost out to Max. Not because I had a bad start, I still had one of the best starts on the grid. It's just Max, especially in that second phase, was extremely strong. It just comes and goes. Today we did some homework on it and tried to get everything in a better window and it all paid off. Yeah, a good surprise and a good step up from yesterday, Norris said. And after seven laps, Norris had closed down on Verstappen and had the opportunity to pass him into the first turn using DRS. The Red Bull driver defended as Norris moved to the outside, then Verstappen took a defensive line into turn four to keep the lead. It was Norris's lone attempt to fight for the lead as Verstappen extended his advantage to five seconds before the first round of pit stops. While there was another chance to take the lead, Norris believed it was wiser to consolidate owing to the coming threat behind. The opportunity to race against Max was only going to be for a few laps, Norris said. We weren't going to find, all of a sudden, the pace we needed to compete against him for a whole race and Fernando was behind me. We knew that their race pace, especially when the majority of the time when it's high degradation and certain things that they can have very good race pace. He didn't have clean air and he was going to be in an opportunity, in a position to potentially just achieve a lot more and I didn't want to compromise my own race by having one more attempt. Norris feels that even if he had managed to pass Verstappen, retaining the lead against the dominating car and driver combo would have been difficult. At the same time, I was low on the battery and those types of things, he said. If you overheat the tires too much too early, you can pay the price quite heavily. I tried. It wasn't worth a second attempt as much as I would have loved to, and I think potentially could have done. Just, it wasn't worth the risk and potential consequences of them being in the hands of Fernando and the people behind. If there was a little bit more space, or if I was literally a couple of meters further down, things could have been a little different. But at the same time, to then try to keep Max behind for the rest of the race would have been a whole new challenge. The McLaren Britain finished on the podium for the seventh time this season, with six second place results. Only in Singapore was it not Max Verstappen who prevented him from his maiden F1 victory. The second part of the season has shown us that McLaren and especially Norris are a force to be reckoned with. And this all happened since its mid-season overhaul. Since then, they've changed into something that can truly defeat Aston Martin, Ferrari and Mercedes and be the best of the rest. However, McLaren has now begun to resemble something possibly greater. Christian Horner believes McLaren is now Red Bull's closest competitor and he's correct. Since that original Australian Grand Prix improvement, McLaren has amassed 25 points more than Ferrari, 50 points more than Mercedes, and 158 points more than Aston Martin in the last 11 races. McLaren has begun to appear like a possible Red Bull beater, especially on only one lap in qualifying. Oscar Piastri and Lando Norris have both won sprint race pole positions this season, with Norris over a tenth and a half ahead of Verstappen in Friday's Q2 session for the Brazilian Grand Prix until a storm swept in and fouled things for McLaren in Q3. However, outside from the Singapore outlier, defeating a Red Bull in qualifying isn't the actual stress test of where McLaren is at. It's the race pace that Red Bull is so incredible at. We had four racing stints in Brazil where Red Bull's quickest driver and McLaren's fastest driver battled head-to-head -head in a direct fight, employing very similar tyre strategy. Over 92 laps of racing, the McLaren gave up a little over a tenth of a second every lap. 0.137 seconds to be exact. The most positive aspect for McLaren when compared to Ferrari, Mercedes and Aston Martin is that McLaren has constantly introduced updates to their car that have resulted in noticeable improvements in performance. 
This indicates that the team has a far better awareness of its own strength and shortcomings than in the past. Those incremental summer modifications resulted in a considerable improvement in pure lap time, while team principal Andrea Stella credits an additional big update for Singapore, with greatly enhancing McLaren's tyre management. And while driving behind other cars is more damaging to the tyres than running in pure air, Stella remains sceptical that McLaren, in its current form, can defeat the Red Bull if it can obtain track position. On new tyres, we can fight for pole, he said, but as soon as the tyres degrade, it would appear Max, Red Bull, they have less degradation. He believes the RB19 is superior in terms of reducing the amount of grip the tyres lose throughout a stint, and he clearly implied that some basic design on the current McLaren inhibits his team's ability to adapt and reduce the deficit. Where we think the difference is made, we can't do very much with this car, he said. When questioned how much of Red Bull's apparent tyre degradation advantage over McLaren is due to aerodynamics, and how much is due to mechanical grip, Stella was exceedingly cautious. He was only prepared to say it's a combination of both. He indicated McLaren has set some targets in terms of developing its way out of this situation, but added, I can't say in which area and how. He did, however, affirm McLaren's priority is not only aero. Obviously, Stella does not want to reveal McLaren's primary development targets for 2024, but his cautious responses do provide some vital hints. Stella was also asked about Red Bull's clever rear suspension layout, which is thought to be crucial in stabilizing the RB19's aero platform and allowing it to produce more downforce more consistently than other cars, while also allowing Red Bull to run smaller wings for the straight-line speed boost. In response to a direct question about the importance of mechanical development, Stella described the suspension as very important because it enables aerodynamic development and plays a fundamental role in what he called tire utilization. Because the tires are connected to the circuit, and the suspension is what connects them to the car. Suspension is difficult to improve, especially in season. Thus, any substantial work in this area should preferably be done early and locked in before deciding on the remainder of the car's growth route. According to Stella, aerodynamic components are much more susceptible to development than evolving suspensions. Therefore, any F1 team's attention will naturally be on developing the components that are much easier to develop, such as bodywork parts. However, getting the right suspension layout is critical in unlocking the potential for that aerodynamic development, which should result in a compound benefit on tire life over a stint, because the better your mechanical platform and the more stable your aero platform are, the less likely you are to slide and overheat the tires. It appears to be straightforward, yet it's far from it. In 2022, Ferrari looked to have a pretty good mechanical and aero basis, but attempts to make the car less draggy during the winter severely skewed the picture, transforming the Ferrari into a peaky and unreliable car to drive. Mercedes tried what Toto Wolff now refers to as sticking plaster solutions with redesigned bodywork, floor and front suspension on this year's W14, as it sought to shift direction and reverse out of its distinctive zero pod idea. Stella believes suspension will be a significant emphasis for every team during the winter of 2023. In his words, everyone will be investing in developing their suspensions, I'm pretty sure, so we can assume McLaren will be included. And if Stella's team can make the same kind of progress in that part of the car that it has obviously made with this year's in-season aero work, it's little surprise that Lando Norris is excited about what's to come in 2024. Obviously, there's still the risk that McLaren appears to be unnaturally close to Red Bull right now, since the development of the RB19 has been largely deprioritized this season in order for Red Bull to have a head start on creating its replacement, the RB20. Warner addressed this in Mexico, and it would serve as a strong caution to the other teams not to become complacent. However, as Horner subsequently stated following Verstappen's eight-second triumph over Norris in the Brazilian GP, returns are going to diminish for Red Bull at some time because, as he put it, Red Bull will have reached the top of the curve in terms of its own car development. Horner believes the field will then concertina and closer. When this happens, McLaren must be prepared to strike first. What are your thoughts on McLaren's plan for next year? Do you think they'll have enough time and resources to create a Red Bull challenging car for next year? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below.